there is nothing to writing. All you do is sit in front of a typewriter and bleed, said Ernest Hemingway. Belonging to a rich tradition of American literature on hunting and exploration, Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway is a novella about an old man, Santiago, and his daring young dreams. Quite a reflection of the diminishing career of Ernest Hemingway in the 1950s. After the failure of novels like Across the River and Into the Trees, how did Ernest Hemingway go on to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954? What magic did Ernest Hemingway weave in The Old Man and the Sea? Let's find out answers to these questions. Born in Oak Park, Illinois in 1899 to a doctor father and a school teacher mother, Ernest Hemingway wanted to have a first-hand experience of World War I. He went to Italy volunteering as an ambulance driver for Red Cross where he was badly injured by shrapnel. This incident led the writer in him to create a style of writing where he started fictionalizing biographical experiences. His experiences in Italy is well written in perhaps the greatest novels that he has written, A Farewell to Arms. It was Tennessee Williams who said, Hemingway knew the quality of an artist's work, the very heart of it is the writer himself and his own life. Hemingway moved to Paris where he worked in correspondence for the Toronto Daily Stars. It's in Paris that he met a group of expatriate American and British writers, writers like Fitzgerald, Ezra Pound, and more importantly, Ford Maddox Ford, who practiced realism in his writing. Hemingway wrote in dramatic realism. Dramatic realism is a technique where you present minimal details. Minimal details of characters and events and urge the readers to make interpretations out of it. In 1940, after leaving Paris, Hemingway wrote his best-selling novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls. All of Hemingway's writing revolved around bullfighting, hunting, fishing, which built up the mythical breed of masculinity he was popular for and was later critiqued after the advent of feminism. Hemingway lived in Cuba for some years where he fished in the Gulf Stream. This experience gave him enough knowledge to create the craftsmanship of fishermen in Old Man and the Sea. Fighting bouts of depression, unfortunately Hemingway committed suicide in 1961 but not before giving humanity compelling narratives of of man's triumph in a world designed for his own destruction. William Faulkner said, he is not dead because he arrested for a believable moment the antics of human being involved in the act of comedy and tragedy. And for this reason, Ernest Hemingway will live on. Critics and readers called Old Man and the Sea a new classic and compared it with other great literature on hunting and exploration like The Moby Dick, uh, The Seafarer, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and the bear. The old man and the sea went on to win 
a lot of accolades including the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and the Nobel Prize for Literature. The Nobel Committee remarked that Ernest Hemingway deserves this Nobel Prize for his mastery of the art of modern narration. Old Man and the Sea is a novella. A novella is a literary genre, a narrative prose fiction which is shorter than novels but longer than a short story. It is derived from the Italian word novella which means new. Albert Camus' The Stranger, Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness and George Orwell's Animal Farm are all examples of novellas. However, the literary world owes homage to Ernest Hemingway for not only really perhaps writing the best novella ever written but also for popularizing the genre of novellas. Let's take a look at the prominent characters of Old Man and the Sea. Before you quit, try, said Ernest Hemingway. This quotation is best exemplified in the life and ordeal of this old Cuban fisherman, Santiago. He went without a catch for 84 days in the ocean. His wife left him and never had a child. His entire existence, the community's respect and his reclaiming of identity all depended upon this one struggle, this one battle, will Santiago be able to catch a big fish? For Santiago, fishing is not an act of materialistic pleasure. In fact, it is a spiritual act. Santiago wanted to catch a big fish not to survive, but to prove to Manolin and his community that he can. He wanted to gift Manolin with a, a memory of who Santiago really is. A man who endures, a man who perseveres. Ernest Hemingway succeeded in giving the American people a symbol. A symbol of endurance. A symbol of hope. One shall not forget the golden words of this novella. Man can be destroyed but not defeated. And this man is Santiago. The second character is Manolin. Manolin is Santiago's last and deepest human relationship. The person who Santiago looks forward to as the carrier of his own inheritance. What would Manolin inherit from Santiago? The knowledge of the sea the craftsmanship of a fisherman and more importantly the memory of who Santiago is. Manolin is an adolescent boy, Santiago's apprentice and uh, a much devoted attendant. Manolin deeply cares for the old man. He thinks of Santiago as his own mentor and he dons the role of a pupil, a boy who is young. In one of the most moving portions of the novella in the concluding chapters, Santiago, after coming home from his great ordeal, hands over the spear to Manolin. Manolin accepts the spear with utmost reverence and professes his faith in Santiago. Out from the sea, in the context of the narrator, Manolin functions as the eyes of the reader. It is through Manolin that the reader is exposed to the depths and deepest portions of Santiago's heart. The marlin is the 18-foot fish that Santiago attempts to catch. Although Santiago hooks the marlin much early in his life at sea, the marlin takes the skiff along with Santiago farther and farther from land and deeper and deeper into the ocean. It takes three days and three nights for Santiago to ultimately kill the marlin. Santiago considers the marlin a noble adversary, a worthy opponent and a nemesis, thus forming 
a brother like relationship often even conversing with each other santiago appreciates these qualities in the marlin the nobility of spirit the faithfulness to one's own identity and the honor and dignity in never quitting these are the qualities that define santiago himself in other words santiago's struggle with the marlin is santiago's struggle with himself most critics agree that the sea is a character a setting and a symbol in old man and the sea it represents the vastness the wildness and the uncertainties of nature santiago identifies himself with the sea and the creatures in it the text remarks he always thought of the sea as la mar which is what people call her in spanish when they love her sometimes those who love her say bad things about her they are always said as though she were a woman some of the younger fishermen those who used floats for their lines and had motor boats bought when the shark livers had brought much money spoke of her as el mar which is masculine they spoke of her as a contestant or a place or even an enemy but the old man always thought of her as feminine and as something that gave or withheld great favors and if she did wild or wicked things it was because she could not help them the moon affects her as it does a woman he thought clearly the old man and the sea portrays the sea in a multi gendered fashion hemingway's heroes are often understood as masculine so in the context of a multi gendered sea what it indicates is hemingway's and santiago's and cites about masculinity in the sense that they tailor the sea's gender according to their experiences at the sea if santiago perceives his experiences as masculine he labels the sea as feminine and vice versa let's take a look at some vocabulary that will help you to understand old man and the sea better a skiff as you can see a skiff is a small boat propelled by oars or motor in the text it says he was an old man who fished alone in a skiff a bodega a bodega is a small shop selling groceries especially in a hispanic area plankton as you can see are small organisms that float or drift in the water a dentuso means big tooth in the text it is referred to the mako shark having sharp teeth a gaff is a strong huge hook on a pole or a barbed wire used especially to land big fishes the man of war bird which comes in the text repeatedly are large tropical birds with long wingspans and a hooked beak there are two prominent symbols in old man and the sea one dimaggio dimaggio is a legendary new york yankees baseball player his 56 game hitting streak is still a world record santiago admires dimaggio santiago dreams of having dimaggio along with him while he is fishing he remarks but i think the great dimaggio would be proud of me today santiago gains hope and encouragement by thinking about dimaggio dimaggio achieved his hitting streak while he was suffering consistent injuries like bone spurs repeatedly mentioned in the novella dimaggio is Santiago's silent companion a person he converses with Dimaggio is Santiago's hero The second repeatedly used symbol are images of young lions Santiago repeatedly sees a dream a vision of young lions roaming near the shores of Africa This is an image that he picked up when he was a child 
going through a ship in the shores of Africa. The lions symbolize Santiago's lost youth and pride. It is to be noted that a group of lions is called a pride. Santiago's love for the lions, which are fierce predators, mirrors his love and admiration for the marlin. He loves the marlin, but he understands the death of the marlin is necessary in the cycle of nature's generational routine. The lions also symbolize Santiago's affinity with nature. Now that Santiago is no longer young, he only sees these lions in his dreams. Santiago's dreams of the lions at the end of the novella suggest that in triumphing over the marlin, he has undergone his own rejuvenation. The conflicts in Old Man and the Sea. Just like the title suggests, Old Man and the Sea addresses an age-old conflict between man and nature. San Diego faces several challenges given to him by nature, the sea and the struggle with Marlin being the most obvious. There are also other challenges he faces from elements of nature. Santiago remarks, all this life the early sun has hurt my eyes. The novella thus explores the relationship between man and nature. He thinks of the flying fish as his friends and talks to a wobbler to pass time. Finally, Santiago does not see the marlin as an adversary but calls him a brother. Come on and kill me. I do not care who kills who. He says, Santiago believes in the fundamental law of nature. All beings must die, kill or be killed. In this way, man and nature are joined in a circular system in which death is necessary and fosters new life. The second conflict is the conflict between youth and age. Though a conflict, the novella projects an idea of a harmony between the young and the old. The young in the, novel, in the novella is represented by Manolin and the old or the aged is represented by Santiago. The young brings energy and enthusiasm. It is Manolin who brings food and clothing for Santiago. On the other hand, it is Santiago who provides Manolin with wisdom and experience. What one lacks is provided by the other, thus forming a perfect harmony. Santiago being old is important because old man and the sea is about a frail man struggling against the courts of the world. Santiago's inspiration to catch and kill the marlin is coming from a desire to approve to Manolin what a man can do. The story is about how an imperfect man faces a difficult ordeal and comes out of it in glorious ways. The third conflict is between defeat and destruction. The text clearly distinguishes between defeat and destruction. A man can be destroyed but not defeated. Santiago is getting destroyed but he does not give up to defeat. Santiago is a man fighting against defeat. For 84 days he is lost in the sea. For three nights and three days he continues an ordeal with a powerful marlin. And he fights off the shark. Even the very attempt of fighting the shark is hopeless. But he still does it. But he still strives to it. Santiago clearly distinguishes between defeat and destruction. After catching the fish, Santiago battles the sharks even when he knows that a fight against them is hopeless. Santiago represents every man's struggle to survive. Though the object of the struggle fails, Santiago returns to the land as a victorious man, only because he did not quit. Let's take a look at other interpretations and critical readings of Old Man and the Sea. Old Man and the Sea is full of Christian images and Christian allegory. 
Santiago ultimately becomes a reflection of Christ himself. Moving away from the land and into the sea, Santiago is in the wilderness, very similar to the experiences of Jesus Christ in the wilderness. His injured hands reflect Christ's injured hands, bloodied with the marks of the nail. When the sharks attack Santiago, he screams, I, like a man who is crucified. And when he returns to the land, he carries the mast over his shoulders as if he is carrying the cross of his burden. His final resting position on the bed with open arms resembles the image of Christ crucified. More importantly, Santiago reflects Christ in that, like Christ, he transforms loss into triumph. He faces and acknowledges the death of the Marlin without complaining about it. Christ literally is resurrected while Santiago regains Manolin as his apprentice, providing both the companionship he had lost and getting a friend to whom he can transfer his knowledge. One of the lasting legacies of Old Man and the Sea is in the way how the text redefines the idea of defeat, failure and success, the tragic vision of man. The text is ultimately about survival and not defeat. In his failure, Santiago becomes victorious. The world that Hemingway presents is a world full of struggle, never-ending struggle. First the marlin, then the sharks. Man is continuously bouted against powers that hold a control over him, powers beyond him. That is why Old Man and the Sea becomes an important text in understanding man's triumph over a world that is designed to destroy him. I am reminded of a poem titled Ithaka, written by a poet C. Kawafi. In the poem Ithaka, a sailor starts his journey into unknown lands, crossing these oceans. He is looking for Ithaka. His trophy is Ithaka and he wants to reach the destination called Ithaka. And as the poem ends, the, the poet reminds us that the journey has given him so much experience that he is now full of wisdom and experience that he knows what the Ithakas mean. It is the journey that taught him lessons of life and not the destination. Existentialism Often acknowledged as an existentialist in his writing, Ernest Hemingway's Old Man and the Sea is a classic example of existentialism. Existentialism is the philosophy that states existence precedes essence. It's founded on the principle that we make meaning of our existence through our actions. Devoid of our actions, we do not possess any inherent essential meaning. Existentialism was advocated and popularized by philosophers like Albert Camus, Sartre and writers like Kafka. The old man's never-ending ordeal and his desire to create and recreate the identity of being the greatest fisherman ever lived arises out of an existentialist angst. Old Man and the Sea is not a text about defeat, but it is about the glory of the struggle. The last lines of the novella reads, Up the road in his shack, the old man was sleeping again. He was still sleeping on his face and the boy was sitting by him, watching him. The old man was dreaming about the lions. Thus, the desire for man to survive and flourish continues rather beautifully.